Hey guys, welcome to the first commentator match on Nimbesta City. Today we'll be looking at a game from the 2011 format Mysterious Dawn to Majestic, sorry, Majestic Dawn to Call of Legends. The two, the matchup we'll be looking at will be Gyarados from Stormfront against Magnarok, Magnazone Regirock from Triumphant and also Stormfront. Now, the way the matchup goes, what Gyarados looking, is looking to do is to discard as many Magikarp as possible, so three, and attack with the full revenge attack that does for free, so for zero energy, 30 damage times the number of Magikarp in his discard pile. What, um, what Magnarok is looking to do is accelerate energy thanks to Regirock and Lost Zone each energy and does to do 50 damage times the number of energy lost zone. We're playing with unrestricted rules, uh, which was apparently the rules of our national format in Switzerland. Now, the Gyarados player on the right doesn't have such a good start, plays Seeker on unknown exclamation mark, uh, unknown question mark, and uses its ability twice to try and draw more cards. Uh, the Magnarok player plays Judge, which could be good for me, but I am item locked thanks to the Spur Team active. The way this matchup generally goes down is Magnarok has a lot of HP, 140 HP, uh, base HP, plus the Expert Belt, which gives it 20 more HP. And Gyarados is kind of maxed out at 90 damage, plus the 20 from the Expert Belt, 110. So it's very reliant on a lot of Crobat Flash Bites to take the knockout. Um, Gyarados also has weakness. It has 130 base HP and plus 30 weakness, so Magnarok only needs to loss zone 2 energy to take the knockout. And if we both have Expert Belts, then, or if Magnarok has an Expert Belt, then it's still 2 energy. And if I have an extra belt, then Magnarok takes two prize cards. And generally the matchup is quite difficult. So what I have to try to do is take a one hit knockout and use Mesperit, which I only have one of, and block Magnarok from using any Poke Powers, since Poke Powers are what make the entire deck run. I attach a warp to Magikarp, which is not really where I want to keep a warp. I and I use the attack. I discard up to two cards from my hand, and for each card discarded, I draw a card. And looks like Magnarok does not have a good start either. Stuck with the Spiritomb active, and nothing to evolve on the bench, so just a draw pass from them. And I use the unknown question marks Poke Power, which is I put a card face down from my hand. The, my opponent guesses the type. If they guess right, nothing happens. If they guess wrong, then I draw a card. Since Magnarok, uh, since Gyarados plays, I think, five different types, Psychic, Dark, Metal, Grass, Water, then it's very easy for my opponent to guess wrong. And I use the attack once more, really trying to get something, discarding all the useless items from my hand, that Sableye that is not in play, that is kind of useless at this point. And I use the ability again, it looks like he guesses wrong metal type, not very uh, obvious, and once again it's just a very slow start. Uh, what I'm looking to do is probably get a warp energy, discard some Magikarp, I think there's still zero dis Magikarp in the discard, throw up the Magikarp, evolve into Gyarados, and start taking knockouts as quickly as possible. But it looks like, yep, it looks like the Magnarok player top decks a Magnemite, and can start Darkness Gracing into it, which is kind of an issue. If I can manage to... Hmm, I don't play any catcher effects, so even Regimove would not be able to help me here, but it would allow me to get that Spirit Team out of the active. It looks like I'm going to use the, the Poke Power one more time. I have a lot of cards in hand, and it's a water type, which he seems to guess right. 
effect. So I evolved the Magikarp into a Gyarados, and it looks like I have an energy in hand. I use a Seeker, bring back the Azoth. I don't... Oh! If I manage to use Regimove right here and attach a Retreat, then that would be perfect. Because I would be able to take out the only... Uh, the only viable Pokemon, the only viable attacker on my opponent's bench, which is also his draw support. And then leave the Spirit Tomb active, which Adam locks, and would prevent my opponent from actually doing anything. And it looks like I just have to properly sequence this. I Regimove move a Pokemon Rescue and a Super Scoop Up. I attach a Rescue Energy and I use Communication throwback I don't know what that was and it looks like I'm gonna get an Uxie, Uxie for six I think maybe seven I don't see where my hand is and what I'm going to be looking for here is two yeah two Magikarp plus a junk arm or something that will let me discard so maybe a super scoop of heads on the Reggie move uh, but I wouldn't want to use Reggie move again um, yeah. Look yep, looks like it's set up for seven. Six, seven, and I don't know how much of that I get. Um yeah, what I'm looking for is to discard two magic car plus that expert belt I do. Sixty plus twenty, eighty, perfect to knock out that magneton. I use Crobat's flashbite on the spirit tomb. Poke turn, flash, flashbite again, and oh no! I just bring it back to the hand. It looks like I'm valuing that extra bench space. And what can I do here? Uxie for three. Looks like two. I think it's two. Yeah, since it was a. Uh, yeah, I don't know. And I use the attack. Very weak turn. A lot of draw, but no return. It. Looks like my opponent is going to have a field day if he gets out a Magnet, a Magnezone, and more cards. Yep, here comes the Magnezone. Looks like he was in his hand for a while, especially after all those draw passes. And if his hand is also full of items, he'll be able to play down his hand, draw back up with a uh, Magnetic Draw, I think it's called, and hopefully accelerate some energy. He benches an unknown cute. Gonna get that free retreat. Gets down that Azolf. And it looks like there are some valuable Pokemon prize. Takes out a Magnemite. Probably a good reason why he couldn't get out couldn't get any out sooner. And puts back a card, because that's what Azolf does. And yeah. Uh the way we're doing Azolf here is we get to look at our prize cards. Uh, each time that we each time we take a prize that way we don't try to uh, that way we don't have to write it down or try to memorize it uh, I think what was the official ruling on it was you had to write it down you couldn't look at it every time so people would have like a pen and paper yeah uh, it looks like he's hesitant on what to play what he would like to have here is the other Magnezone. Oh, just a warp energy into that spirit team. And now that Magnezone just, oh, magnetic draw for two. Don't think it changes much. He would need a broken time space since Rare Candy doesn't work here to get another Magnezone out. But I don't think he wants to play Broken Test Space in front of me because we both really enjoy having Broken Test Space in play. Uh, I think Magnarok prefers it more. And here comes a Collector. I'm going to get out probably a uh, Regirock and a Blissey. Yep. And I think. Oh, I was going to say, I think that would be the end of turn, but of course he can always Darkness Grace, and he's shuffling, so... 
probably going to do something right after. Though I'm not entirely sure what. I don't think there are any fighting energy in the discard pile. And I don't see a broken task base in his hand. So it'll probably just be a dark disgrace from here. Or a pass. And he's not going to use Darkness Grace, so that probably tells me that there are one or two Magna Magneton in his prizes. Uh, I don't know if he plays 434 or 424. Uh, definitely not 414 because Broken Dice Base is really easy to get out stage twos, and it does require the um, it does require the stage one to play. It's not you know it's not a rare candy. And here I play a Seeker, I bring back that Mesprit, and if I can reuse that Mesprit turn after turn, then I'll be good. But I did waste a Seeker early on. This is my second, and I only played three. And I think I did waste two Super Scoop Ups or so. Uh, Poke Turn isn't relevant. But yeah, it is quite a waste of Scoop Up effects, especially for a card that... And Smeargle, oh, I play normal types too. That's news to me. <laughs> um, so what I'm looking to do here is finally get some Magikarp in the discard. I don't think I have any. What I'll probably do is Reggie move, force my opponent to throw something up, and then I'll just either I'll punch it if I can't take the knockout, or uh, looks like that's an unknown. Uh, unknown Q for the fear retreat. So what I'm gonna do here is there we go, Reggie move. Now I'm doing at least sixty damage, uh, at least eighty damage thanks to that expert belt. And I'm just gonna wait for my opponent to make his choice. It's gonna throw up the Reggie rock, and I'm guessing he calls my bluff. Says, "Hey, I know you can't discard. I know you can't KO this. You need to discard." One more Magikarp, and I really don't think you have the Junk Arm in hand to do that. So I'm gonna warp that unknown level X that you can see, attach that unknown Q, and then I will trade off. Uh, trade off, pretty good ability, uh, maintains the draw power. Well, it doesn't really maintain the draw power of a setup, but it does a strong draw power. Oh, and I discard a Magikarp, so. Um, even though I wouldn't have been able to KO that Magnazone, it would still have been a, uh, um, punching it would have been, would have hurt pretty bad, I guess. And I bench that Mesprit, kind of try to block my opponent for a turn, and I take the knockout. All my opponent needs to have is an Expert Belt and a Lightning Energy. Uh, to take the knockout, but he would have to loss out all of his energy, which is not really ideal, so I think maybe just sitting for a turn would be safer here. Uh, I did play that Seeker, which did let him bring that Azoth back, which means, oh, there's the Magneton, it was already in his hand. Here comes that Blissey with that Nurse Call, and here comes down uh, the uh, engineer's adjustments. Discard an energy, draw four cards. Uh, draw four, draw three. I don't remember. I think it was draw three. Um, just gonna check. <laughs> engineer's adjustments. Draw four cards. Yep. Pretty good supporter card. Uh, extremely good in this deck since you want to get energy in the discard pile for. Reggie Rock's Reggie Cycle, or for Magnazone's Super Connectivity, I think it's called. And here, he doesn't have any Poke Powers, so probably what he's going to do is just set up his board, maybe just use a Darkness Grace, uh, maybe play down some cards just to get a stronger board state. Uh, he already played a supporter, so there won't be any collectors for Reggie Rock. Plays on the Azov. Uh, for nothing. Oh right, because he's still Poké Power locked. 
attaches that rescue energy just in case anything happens. Just in case I'm able to take that one hit knockout and he just passes over to me. And I think at this point, I'm not really going to take the risk of using a ready move. Since I don't know, since my opponent could just throw up that Magna Zone and then take the knockout right behind. And if I'm unable to block his Poke Powers for another turn, then I would be. Uh, then my opponent would just have a really easy time of catching back, attaching a Lightning Energy, maybe attaching a an Expert Belt, or um, or getting a Reggie Rock in play using that Reggie Cycle ability. And I do not have a Rescue Energy attached to my active, so being able to recycle that Gyarados won't be possible. Oh, well, there it is. I have it in hand. Don't know when I drew it, but I just take the knockout on the active and let my opponent play out his turn with all of his Poke Powers. Uh, those Call won't really do much. And here comes that super connectivity Magna Zone. It's a really good Magna Zone for recovery. Uh, generally, when you lose a Magna Zone, you lose a Lightning Energy. And so this is kind of your chance to be able to utilize that Rescue Energy, drop down all three stages, uh, use Super Connectivity on the active, and take the knockout. It also works great with the Nurse Call, lets you discard some extra cards, normally energy, but sometimes, for example, this Spiritomb, which is a dead card at this point. Uh, the deck does play four Spiritombs, so having them in hand is kind of, uh, kind of useless. And, uh, yeah, he gets out that two spirit tomb, really thins out the deck. This is, this is a really good reason why Pokeball Collector has such strong value in a deck like this, is that early game, it gets out all of your support Pokemon, all of your, all of your attackers. I mean, of course, getting out basics is always useful. But also mid late game, with four spirit tomb, with cards like Uxie in the deck that he just shuffled in, as often the deck that he may not have used. Um, just always being able to get those out of the deck into the hand and then discard them off things like Ready Cycle, Nurse Call, just to recycle those energy, heal your Pokemon. And also, if you have cards in hand that you don't want to discard, um, yeah, again, it lets you thin the deck. And then, you know, you don't really... You know, you gain hand advantage since uh, Magnetic Draw won't always draw you the cards that you want to discard. And um, yeah, overall, it's it's not about supported to play early game, mid game, nor late game. And yeah, so here comes down a Magnetic Draw, draws back up to six. And we'll see if he does hit that Lightning Energy. Oh, it looks like he does have it in hand. So what he's probably going to do is Reggie Cycle, get that Lightning and that Fighting into the discard pile, and then attach the other Fighting, and then use Super Connectivity, take that one damage, and then heal it off if he deems it fit. Attaches that Fighting from the hand, and so boom, in one turn, attaches three energy into play. Uh, two of two of which were in the hand, uh, one of which was in the discard pile. But he did he did discard a lightning and a fighting to use that Reggie Cycle ability, so next time he will have another fighting energy to use the Reggie Cycle. So here he lost zone three energy. He's trying to decide what the third one should be. I don't think he's really expecting me to take the knockout. So lost only that lightning uh oh yeah looks like he's expecting me to take the knockout uh in one way or another and he takes his two prize cards uh again he does get to see what they are because uh, uh because of azov which he has used i think three times this game well he's benched it three times used it twice since that third time was under vesperit and just, just gonna pick out what the most efficient price cards are at this point of the game. 
And what I'm going to have to do is find my broken time space, drop it, drop the Magikarp and the Gyarados, and just try to take a huge knockout right here. My opponent does have, I think it's four prize cards remaining. Can't really see that uh, with the what's with the potential final card out of play. But uh, we'll just see how good a play on my turn is. Starting off with the trade off, it's always good to start off with the draw abilities. Just really see all the cards that you have with you, and just figure out what your options are. Of course, if you're looking for a specific card, then it is better to thin out the deck and then use your draw abilities, uh, draw poker powers, and draw back what you need. But if you do need more information to figure out what you're going to do during your turn, it is good to draw first. Uh, it all depends on what you have already and what you need and what you can get with your search cards. And that is pretty much the basis of any sequencing is uh say i need a stadium well i would have to use my search cards to take out everything that's not a stadium tails on the super scoop up that means i won't be able to reuse mesprit and if i had been able to use mesprit i would have been able to block my opponent from accelerating any energy and probably taking a knockout so pretty big shame but that is what happens when flip cards and I bench a magic card but it looks like I'm going to need just the broken time space but it looks like I'm going to psychic restore I'm going to retreat thanks to that free retreat use psychic restore uh, with the expert belts it's 40 damage plus the 10 from this uh, super connectivity from earlier and then I think I'm going to promote that unknown question mark uh, or that mess for it could be good Vesper could be good if I manage to bring it back from the discard with something like a uh, like a Pokemon Rescue, but I think one of those was dis one of those was definitely discarded earlier. I don't know if a second one was discarded or if I played two. I really don't remember what the list was. And here comes another super connectivity. Uh, looks like an attack from the hand with that lightning energy. Yep. Just gotta prep that Magneton on the bench and Magnetic Draw, just refill that hand. Uh, Magna Magnarok is a really strong deck. Magnazone has two attributes, both of them extremely powerful. Drawing up to six, always good. And 50 damage times the number of Lost Zone energy, it's no damage cap and scales really quickly especially with uh, with these energy acceleration such as the uh, Regirock on the bench and he uses a nurse call here just heals 20 uh, well, and here comes that expert belt so I would need an expert belt and a flashbite to take the knockout many 110 120 plus 40 makes 160 and he's going to lost so just one energy to take that elk out. Uh, one thing you want to do against this deck is put up really high HP Pokemon and make them lost so the maximum amount of energy. And then that way they might run out of energy. Uh, of course, my opponent is uh, 2011 national champion uh, in seniors with Magnarok, so. Let's just say he's not going to run out, of, run out of energy anytime soon. <laughs> and I do manage to evolve the Magikarp into the Gyarados and attach a rescue energy. Again, what I need is the Expert Belt and the Flashbite. But it is possible that I whiff both. Uh, looks like I'm doing a deck search. Uh, or it's just my hand. Yep. And I'm going to do... Oh! Two Poke turns really get that up there and then I have the knockout here I just need to see if I'm going to do anything else to build up my board I'm not going to play down any broken time space oh but it looks like I am going to go for the super scoop up with that junk arm really just 
block my opponent from using any more Poke Powers. So let's see how this flip goes. It's a heads, and I get to reuse that best Brit. Reuse that that ability that is uh, almost a Hex Maniac. And just limit my opponent's options for the next turn. And here comes Elixir Ball, probably mostly just for thinning the deck, but also just for drawing extra cards. Uh, I don't think I'm looking for anything for my next turn. Uh, as I said earlier, I really don't want to play Broken Time Space. Uh, oh, yeah, Mesprit, that is key. Uh, Mesprit, unlike Hex Maniac, only works during my opponent's turn. So I can Uxie right afterwards, and it looks like I don't have many cards in my deck. And I'm just going to throw down a full revenge. Um, full vengeance? Don't remember what that's called. And just take two prize cards that I need. I also used Azoth earlier in the game, so I am able to just look at my prize cards and figure out what I'm gonna what I'm gonna use. And yeah, my opponent promotes a Reggie Rock, I think, knowing that he won't be able to attack, and warps into oh wait, nope. I spoke too soon. Here comes the broken time space and the Magna Zone. My opponent has three prize cards remaining. Uh oh yeah, looks like he accidentally discarded that Magna Zone, but with the rescue energy you can bring it back to hand. Uh if I recall correctly, it's a mandatory game action, so you don't really have the option to just lose it. And as I said earlier, only needs to lost zone two energy to take the knockout. But thanks to the broken time space and the rescue energy, I can just set up another attack. But will I be able to take the one hit knockout? And this is where Gyarados really falls short in this matchup. It is unable to take quick knockouts on such high HP Pokemon. And I think this is really what makes Magna Rock probably one of probably the best deck in the format. Um, I think it does struggle a little bit against Luxchomp because Garchomp can just take out that Regirock with one flash bite and a DCE. And uh, the deck only plays two Regirock. Uh, I'd say this list only plays two. I don't know how many other lists play. But being able to just uh, KO a Regirock sort of at will twice in a row really limits the opponent's option, especially when you have 110 HP, no weakness, and your opponent is forced to loss of 3 energy to take a knockout. Uh, or 2 with an Expert Belt. But again, that means an Expert Belt will be in play. Uh, but if it does manage to maintain momentum, draw enough cards, accelerate enough energy thanks to super connectivity, and heal with Nurse Call, then it is possible to sort of maintain pacing against Luxchomp. Uh, it's really a matchup worth exploring. Uh, I've played it multiple times. Uh, yeah, really worth looking at. And here comes a super scoop up. I don't really know what I'm going to get. Looks like it's going to be the Mesprit. Uh, sort of limit my opponent from attaching too many energy. If I can use that punch the Magnezone and then use it again, but to be honest, I think I'm all out of Super Scoop Up, then I will be able to sort of uh, make it so that my opponent has no more energy in play. But my opponent only has two prize cards left, and if I am unable to reuse Vesperate, which I think it will be impossible for me to reuse, then here will come the... Then it will just be knockout after knockout. Takes the knockout, get to bring it back thanks to rescue energy. Promote the Uxi, draw a card, and my turn will be pretty simple. But uh, once again, here is kind of where Gyarados is just lackluster. Being limited to 110 damage, it's really not that much, and you really don't want to give your opponent too many price cards, especially when they can take knockouts with such ease, thanks to having really well scaled damage and, of course, weakness. 
and energy acceleration. It's really just every single part of Magnus Rock that makes it a bad matchup for Gyarados. Um, a variant of Gyarados that would have a better matchup against Magnarok would be the Mew version. So you would Lost Zone a Gyarados and then use Mew with Rescue Energy. That way you can have four Magikarp in the discard. I have considered building a list, but I don't know, don't really know how to keep the balance between Psychic Energy for Mew's attack and uh, Rescue Energy just to reuse Mew. Maybe it'll play a higher count of Pokemon Rescue. Still have to figure out the details of that. But I take the knockout. Only one prize, despite it having 140 HP. Seriously, so much HP. I only take one prize card. And here comes the Magnezone. Back at Magnezone, I unfortunately wasn't able to reuse... That Vesperate, if you look at my discard pile, I only have a Rescue Energy, which means my turn was literally just Evolve, uh, Bench, Evolve, Expert Belt, and Attack. But here we go, here's a Psychic Energy, and he takes the Knockout. Only had one prize, so attaching that Expert Belt didn't really matter as much. But yeah, there was really not much I could do. Uh, looks like my head was just clogged up with a lot of text. Uh, Combi... Good as a Pokemon Rescue. Searchable Pokemon Rescue. Uh, looks like a warp point, but really useless at this point. And that is generally how the matchup just goes down. It's Gyarados can can take knockouts here and there, can go down to, you know, having taken four, maybe five prize cards. But in the end, 140 HP is just way too much to take with one with one hit. And uh, yeah. So I hope you enjoyed. Uh, this was my first commentator video, so let me know how I can improve. And uh, stay tuned for more videos posted. Thank you for watching.